Is precast really the future or is it just hype? Everyone is talking about it. Developers, engineers, manufacturers, and even social media influencers. Precast is popping up everywhere. But is it really the future of construction or is it just another trend that will fade away? In this video, we are diving deep into what Precast really is and why it is gaining a lot of attention. And where does it fall short? With over half a decade of direct involvement in Precast construction, I have developed a deep understanding of its advantages and disadvantages. So by the end of this video, we will be able to answer this question. Is Precast the future? Or is it just hype? But before we answer this question, we want to understand what is precast. Precast are building parts that are normally assembled off site, normally in a controlled factory set, and then they are transported and assembled on site to form a giant building block. Examples of precast elements would include number one, precast columns, precast beams precast wall panels, precast slab. And here I can talk about the beam and block technology, the waffle slab technology, and so on and so forth. Other examples of precast would include precast pipes, precast paving blocks that we normally call capros. All these are examples of precast. The precast elements are normally produced in a controlled factory setting. This allows for improved quality, faster timelines, and also reduction of labor force on site. But why is precast gaining a lot of popularity? I would say that the rise in popularity for precast is driven by many economic, industrial, and environmental factors, especially here in Kenya. So today I want to give you a breakdown of four of the most common reasons why many people are switching. So the number one reason why many people are switching to precast is because of the volatile rises of the traditional building materials. We have experienced unpredictable and frequent price changes of the traditional building methods. For example, cement, steel, reinforcing mass, that is, and also natural building stores. So this has given precast a lot of advantage over the traditional methods. This is because precast gives a more accurate cost forecasting it also allows for bulk procurement. And thirdly, because of its predictability in terms of cost, then many developers are saved from the price shocks that happen mid-project. I'll give an example of a client who was doing a 12-story building some few years back. When we were at the field floor, he bought reinforcement bars for that building. And it was around 2.2 million shields. By the time we were headed at the seventh floor, the cost of the reinforcement bars had increased to almost 3 million shillings. By the time we were at ninth floor, it was 3 point something, only for the price to again come down at the tail end of the project. Now, the second thing that is making precast to become a more preferred technology or more preferred as compared to the traditional methods is because of the scarcity of the traditional building materials. Quarries are becoming depleted. They are also becoming more regulated. For example, natural building stones, good quality natural building stones are also becoming hard to find. Transportation logistics for materials such as cement, for such as sand, is becoming a logistical challenge. And so, Precast, on the hand, other hand, has cut on most of these logistical challenges when it comes to transportation. As a result of the depletion of the quarries and the scarcity of availability of these traditional materials, transport from these remote quarries is becoming also a challenge. But on the other hand, precast is very readily available and especially in urban areas since most of the manufacturers of the precast materials are, are located close to these urban areas. Apart from the depletion of the quarries, another thing that I would also want to talk about that is also making precast become a preferred choice is because precast would also optimize use of these old traditional materials. 
they use unlimited amount and they are normally optimized during the manufacturing. For example, for beam and block technology that uses reinforcement bars, normally they will use small steel bars that are pre-stressed by stretching them and that allows for an improvement in their structural performance and hence a reduction in cost. The third thing that is making many people to switch to precast is because of speed. Speed is very vital in many construction projects. How does precast attain that speed? This is because while other works, ordinary works such as foundation are going on site and procurement has been done for the precast elements. Once they are needed, they will just be transported and assembled on site. And that reduces the cost and the time. In rapidly growing cities like Nairobi, speed is a crucial element in construction. It would normally translate to a saving. For instance, speed would enable many developers to have a faster return on their investment. And that's a saving. Secondly, speed would also minimize delay and disruption. Also, for homeowners, an earlier occupancy would be something that is very critical to them. The fourth thing that is making precast to be chosen over the traditional methods is because of the reduction of the workforce on site. With very few skilled laborers, precast is offering an advantage over the traditional method that requires a high intensive skilled labor force. For example, fixing the reinforcement bars, shattering, all these have required a high intensive labor force. But on the other hand, precast would only require transportation, lifting, positioning, connecting, and that reduces the workforce. That would also translate to a saving on site, which is very crucial to many. Remember that the workforce on a project would cost you around 30% of the building cost. And so a saving on the workforce is something that is highly welcome by many developers. While Precast is offering many benefits, it is also not without its own challenges. One, weight and transportation logistics. Some of the Precast elements are heavy or bulky, and that produces a logistical challenge when it comes to their transportation. Secondly, design constraints. Precast is very ideal for repetitive and modular designs. But when it comes to custom or more complex architectural designs, precast becomes very hard or expensive to implement. Thirdly, the flexibility constraints. Indeed, precast is very ideal when the construction is straightforward, but it is very limiting where modifications are required on site. Once precast has been supplied to site, it becomes very hard to make any adjustments. If, if at all there will be any adjustment, that would mean a delay and also a cost increment. It does not allow for mistakes in measurements. It does not allow for mistakes in design. That will have a cost implication to fix. Fourth, reason a good number of the precast elements are vulnerable to damage and therefore special care is required when transporting them and even placing them on site. The fifth reason is poorly sealed joints or poorly aligned joints can result to water leakage or even structural weakness and so a lot of care is required when you are transporting them placing them and positioning them and connecting them. A good number of them would require a proper seal for them to be able to connect properly. Now, while all is said and done, it begs the question, is precast really the future or is it just hype? The answer is, it is not black and white. Precast is a game changer, especially when it is used in the right context. But it is not our one size fits all miracle. Where it fits, it shines. Where it doesn't, it produces a logistical challenge. 
having said all that, would you consider to use Precast in your next project? If you have found this breakdown to be helpful, kindly hit the like button, subscribe and share. We have got more deep dives coming soon. Thank you.